Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Oklahoma Venture Forum podcast. I am your host, Kyle Golding. Today, I'm joined by Bobby Rockers, the CTO at Bison Technology. He is our main presenter for the March meeting of the Oklahoma Venture Forum. So welcome to the podcast today, Bobby. Thank you, Kyle. It's great to be here, man. Wednesday, March 8th is our is the next meeting. It's the March meeting. Bobby is our presenter. We're going to be talking about technology specifically. First of all, introduce yourself and Bison Technology, and then we'll get into the conversation about what you'll be discussing at the March meeting of Oklahoma Venture Forum. As Kyle said, my name is Bobby Rockers. I'm, I'm the CTO of Bison. I've been CTO there for uh, four years since we, we really started Bison Technologies. Bison really works to solve uh, the logistics problem that happens inside of uh, the oil field uh, service space. Uh, so the easiest way to think of what our platform does is it's it's kind of like an Uber for oil field service work, whereby uh, operators that sign into our platform can request jobs or schedule reoccurring jobs. And that can be anything from water hauling to crude hauling to to de- uh, delivering porta potties to locations, any any kind of service work, mowing the grass on location, right? Any kind of service work that needs to be done, they can request out on our platform. It goes out to our network of drivers. Uh, that then accept the job, they run the job, we handle billing for them, we handle, we handle payments uh, as part of that so that they get a consistent uh, um, income uh, at known events and they don't have to worry about the, the net terms for the operators and stuff like that. And, and the operators get a network of, of service providers that can take care of their business. So something we see a lot at the Oklahoma Venture Forum, and it makes sense being, <clears throat> being in Oklahoma, this makes a lot of sense, right? is we see a lot of technology that was either developed for the oil field that then yeah, can be extrapolated yeah. out to other industries or technology coming into the oil field like what, what we're doing here uh, because we're kind of binding the strengths of what we have here in Oklahoma, obviously oil and gas and very smart people who are, who are adapting that technology. So, yeah, and also because of the volume of money, the, the, you know, for this too. particular industry, there's, there's a lot of flexibility when times are good with uh, – uh, with cash flow, and that makes that an easy place to invest in something that we already have experience in. Obviously, the the difficulty with starting up any business is not actually the tech. It's not actually the finding the office space or coming up with ideas. Uh, it really centers around the the, ex- the business knowledge. Mm. Do you understand the process, the workflow? Right. Do you understand what the needs of the customers are, and being able to address those? Which is why we've seen I don't know fifteen Silicon Valley companies try to do this, and they're just all out because somebody in Southern California doesn't understand what actually it takes to be able to do this work in Cushing, Oklahoma. Right. right? So, or they can't adapt a completely different industry to oil and gas the way that we we understand it here in this state. Right. Yeah. Some of the rules that you think should be just standard don't apply when uh, you're talking about a pump or two o'clock in the morning when it's something ices over in the middle of the field. So, also, oil and gas is is a complicated series of multiple processes. It's 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 a very long path from trying to get something out of the ground into something that's usable for for the rest of the world. Yeah, that's why logistics is so important, and the ability to to save time or money at any one of these thousand points is highly valuable to the industry. Yeah, it's also the place that honestly the, the tech has lagged the worst for for most of the time the Bison Technologies have been in business. Our number one competitor was paper. Um, I can talk a little bit about the history of Bison Technologies, but at one point in time, we were an oil field service company ourselves. Uh, we had 1,600 people, 23 offices, 1,000 trucks, and we were spending a crazy amount of money. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars each month on paper ticket books so that the driver could write how the work they did. They could get that stamped. I mean, literally stamped right. by like somebody with a stamp out there to say they did the work. They take another thing, they pull off the curb and copy, take it there. They, in, inside this space, most of the innovation historically has happened at the wellhead, right? Directional drilling, um, uh, you know, sensory feedback mechanisms for that, um, obviously fracking and, and, uh, and non-traditional extraction, those kind of things. At the wellhead is where the technology is. But all the money's lost in the logistics space. And it was this crazy paper process that was crazy human intensive that everybody had different, different ways to go about this. So in a lot of ways, Bison Technologies not only had to build like the Uber for the oil field service industry, but we also had to build the billing and payment and approval mechanisms. It's like we were we were Visa at the same time, right? And uh, and that that was that was a that was a big learning curve to to help people understand that no no you're losing all of your cost overhead in the logistics timeframe in the the people it takes for the approvals in the time it takes to 
to optimize this workflows in the in the time it takes to get paid, you know, cash flows king, and uh, and being able to 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 really take all of that complexity out um, and provide an avenue to bring technology into. Let's be realistic. There's not a hun- a lot of hundred billion dollar spaces like the energy logistics right. space that haven't been tapped by technology. And for for whatever reason, O and G was in that. And so a perfect storm of what we do great in Oklahoma. We have an abundance of it. We have the background information, and the opportunity was there to actually make exactly. impact in a, yeah. in a massive market. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk about you as, yourself a little bit. Let's go all the way back to college, right? When you're back <laughs> in college, you're studying you studying computer science, and your focus is IT. Oh, crap, you're one of those guys. <laughs> uh, and eventually you know, getting your MBA, all right? My stuff. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> no. when you're doing when you're in that process. Did you think to yourself, I'm going to go work in oil and gas? Oh, no, no. Uh, Bison Technology is actually my first oil and gas experience. Right. My, my background is, is really around the tech startup space um, and web technologies, mobile technologies, IoT, um, that kind of thing. Um, I, I, was, I, had, I had originally I'd started a company in 2012 called Ground Warp Technologies that did basically uh, inventory management at, in remote locations. That company got bought up in 2015 by a, another tech uh, company, service company here in Oklahoma called Automation Integrated. I was super duper happy at Automation Integrated. It was really in the IoT space. Mm. Lots of big data, lots of really interesting uh, problems to solve and stuff like this. And then Bison came knocking and uh, it seemed like such a massive opportunity. Be able to do greenfield development in an industry that has this much opportunity that, that there's money for and that there was, there was it was... It was just too much to pass up. So once again, a kind of a perfect storm of your background being in tech and startup, and then the oil field industry kind of came to you. Yeah. And this is the opportunity, one of the bigger opportunities that we have here in Oklahoma because because of of all the things we've just talked about. But how can we as individuals and as as business owners, as influencers, as decision makers, continue down this path of taking the advantage of the opportunities we have here in the state, combining tech and oil and gas and, and feeding off of these large income industries to further additionally add more startups, not just oil and gas, but maybe offshoots or, or adaptation of that technology, et cetera. How can we motivate and inspire other people to, to jump in the game that, the way that you've done it? You know, I don't, it, it's, I think that, I think the question's a little bit wrong because I, if you look at, the competitive advantages we have in Oklahoma, and specifically like Oklahoma City, um, it's it's not centered around a lot of things that you see on the coasts and stuff like this, where you've got a lot of people conglomerated into a very tight space. You know, cre- creativity, serendipity happens when you get a bunch of people in one small space right. and they start colliding right. with ideas. And we are the most spread out city true. in the country. Yes. And it, to a lot of extent, it has been a detriment to our capability to be able to kind of innovate because we have no centrality. I mean, the, the biggest tech company in Oklahoma right now is Paycom. Right. And they're way the heck up there at Gallardia. And they're not doing anything for anybody up there with, with, with all of the, the people that are those minds and that work and that excitement instead of being centralized down here. So I don't think that that's actually, I, I, I think that we've got a lot of, a, a lot of uh, challenges that are going to make it difficult in Oklahoma. But we do have something that we hear, I hear over and over again and that we see over and over again. And that is, we have amazing people mm. and we've got motivated people, we've got excited people, we got people that are not afraid to work. Uh, they, Oklahoma is not afraid of a, of a good day's work. And what's more is, everybody you talk to in Oklahoma, every single solitary entrepreneur I talk to, investor I talk to, executive I talk to, is genuinely wants everyone to succeed here. They want to see you take off, they want to see you do well. And so that's something I think we're already doing incredibly well. We we one of the one of the the blessings we've had out of at Bison is the ability to bring people from outside of Oklahoma to Oklahoma mm-hmm. uh, to be here and to work here. And the same thing we hear every time is, you know what what brought me here was the people. Right. Like I have never seen a place that is that, that is wants to be so competitive, but also is genuinely interested in your success. So I don't think we need to necessarily, in, you know pump up and, and, you know, give the, give the Friday night light speech to get everyone super <laughs> excited about doing tech startups. I think what we need to do is to lean into what our kind of our core strength is, which is each other, each other's experiences, the networks they have. Right. Um, 
we were talking before this, Kyle, and honestly, I, I didn't even know you existed before this co- podcast got set up, but the experience you've had with OVF, with, uh, with the, the, the pitch presenters that you've interacted with, with the companies you've talked to, with the marketing and stuff like that, that's a huge resource. And being able to know that, that I can call you up, which is something you can do in Oklahoma. Yes. You can just call people up and, <laughs> hey, I've got a problem. Can you help me out with this? And I may not have the freaking answer, but I can usually put you in contact with somebody. Right. That's what we need. We need more of. We need right. the support. And we need the support from people who've done this before. Unfortunately, we haven't, haven't had a lot of successful tech exits inside of Oklahoma. Right. So if you can reach out to somebody who has mm-hmm. or to somebody who's had a really successful failure, right? <laughs> right. I, think that that, uh, I think that that's what they can do. And the people at OVF, um, that's what their core strength is. Money's, money is less of a problem than I think people realize. Mm-hmm. The money's out there for, for good tech, for good in, innovation. You've got to be able to show that you've got a product. There's right. got to be actual value in it, right? Um, that's, another, that's another strength of Oklahoma, too. Um, and I, 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 you know, I, I get squirrel moments here. I apologize. But one of the core strengths of Oklahoma is that we seem to really focus on value. Mm-hmm. You go out to some places in the country, and they're, they're, they're pop and drop shops, right? They're just trying to build something up yeah. so they can sell it. And turn go. and burn. Oklahoma, they want to build something and say, hey, yes. we've got something. Look at this thing we did. And it's pr- making pr- people pride say, in that craftsmanship, yes. It is. Yes. And, uh, and willingness to put their name on it. Like, like they take it personal if, if things they do. are not going well. They do. And that's, uh, that's something that's really outstanding. And, um, and so, yeah, I think, that, I think we've got a lot of strengths and we can do that. But what OVF can help with and the people from OVF can honestly help with is being the resource of those people. We can get money. There's connections. There's availability out there if it actually drives value, if it actually solves a real problem, right. if it's capable of, of being something that can innovate in industry. What we've lacked is this, the, the kind of getting everyone together into one place, uh, getting that serendipity, and then using those networks to leverage stuff outside of Oklahoma. Right. And uh, OVF's a great platform for that. There's a lot of really smart people. There's a lot of really capable people. There's a lot of really well-connected people. I think everyone that comes out of these, these OVF presentations and these OVF pitch days needs to be talking to everybody they know in their network, not just in Oklahoma, but yes. everywhere outside their network and go, hey, you should see what the heck we're doing in Oklahoma. Have you right. talked to this company? You need to be looking at them because that's what's going to, to move our roots and expand our, our value and honestly start bringing value from outside of the state in. Which is essential, right? We can we could do a lot with what we have here, but we do need to continue to attract outside investment, outside employees, outside uh, vendors, outside collaborators, et cetera, right? To expand our, our economic base. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely true. The you know, the the you got a lot of different industries and honestly right now everything's either technology or or uh, service, right? Um, I, I'm not trying to shortchange manufacturing or anything like that because those those are obviously strong industries, but, but they've been like around a long time. They've been around a long time, and uh, and most of it seems like the growth in the startup and the entrepreneur space ends up being in either service or right. or tech. That's where the rapid opportunities are. Yeah, the the problem is is that we seem to be, especially in Oklahoma, very good at the service uh, the service industries that leverage the existing customer base in, in locally, hmm. right? I I we've got some of the best coffee shops around. I love Oak. I, True. Elemental and and Clarity are just two of my favorite places on the planet. I just love coffee it. shops, breweries, yes. restaurants. The problem is is that those have a tendency to be local. Yes. And it has a tendency to just recirculate the money that's in the system. Right. Um even even larger industries like healthcare. Healthcare has a tendency to be regional. And OU Medical and and the stuff that's coming out there is 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 great, but mostly it's recirculating Oklahoma money already. But when you start to get into biotech and some of these stuff that, right. that are offering services outside, that brings that brings that money back into Oklahoma. In tech, because there's no border, because there is no no, no barrier to somebody being able to use that, has the opportunity to do what honestly oil has done for Oklahoma, which is to bring a whole bunch of money from outside of Oklahoma in. And that's that's what we need. That's what we need through our networks. That's what we need through our connections. That's what we need through the industries that we focus on. Um, that's what we need to do to 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 become what we all have seen Oklahoma becoming for the last twenty years. And that exactly right there is why you want to be in the room next month, this month March. You want to be the second Wednesday in March. You want to be in the room 
for this presentation I'd like from that Bobby. Quick slide in that, right, right there. You gotta gotta that, the, because nice. what you're saying right there, your approach, your attitude, etc., is exactly right. And how OVF works into it, you'll be in the room, you'll be able to look around the room and say, ah, "There's relationships I can be creating here mm-hmm. as well." So, when in with this simple question, you've hit it a few times already, but I want to kind of reframe it one more time. What is your favorite piece of advice for people when they talk about starting a business, running a business, being an entrepreneur, being just successful in Oklahoma specifically? What are some some strengths or things that that we lean into? What do you like to tell people about doing business in Oklahoma? I think that I think that what I'd like to really drive home with uh, with the startups that I work with and with the people that I interact with are first drive product value. Mm-hmm. It has to be valuable for the people that you're using it, and if you can get enough value out of that, you're going to get plenty of people to pay you, right? So drive product value. Make your decisions on product value. Your your accounting platform. May take you a week and a half, but it's not going to drive product value. Your your marketing and and these kind of things are are might get you more customer attention, but if it's not driving product value, it's ultimately not going to it's not going to matter. Um, and and lean into that as a strength because if you can, then you've got the ability to exponentially grow super quickly. Um, the other thing I I tell them is reach out. Um, yeah. You don't need to find the next program. You don't need to find the next incubator to start up with. You don't need to find the next class to take. You need to lean into the networks and let those people do those things that they're already kind of good good at and make sure that you're leveraging those networks as much as possible. If there's one weakness that I think that uh, a lot of early stage startups have is that they think that they just build the thing, that they're going to be okay. You have to lean into those networks. Right. Start reaching out, talk to people, get them excited about what you're doing and Ask them, hey, thanks for being excited about what I'm doing. You know what you can do? You can sign up for my thing, or you can tell your friends about this. Please bring it up at your at the next whatever. Right. Um, you're you're going to you're going to 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 you know IPCon or something like that next month. Go ahead and and let me know about uh, let them know about what we're doing out here and and talk to it uh, because everyone we help in Oklahoma is ultimately helping Oklahoma, which is coming back to us. Yes, many many times. Over. Rising tide lifts all boats. Yes, sir. That is a perfect way to end the conversation today. I appreciate this so much. Your insights are very interesting. I can't wait for your presentation March 8th at Oklahoma Venture Forum. And for those of you listening and watching the video, that's your next opportunity to get in a room and and make those connections and and continue to expand your network. So appreciate you guys. I appreciate you so much being on the podcast today. Kyle, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun.